Hey, this is Jamie from Stillmeyer Games. I was just live by accident on my personal channel, uh, or personal Facebook feed. Now I'm live on StillmeyerGames.com, or Stillmeyer Games, the Stillmeyer Games page on Facebook. Um, so this is the real stream today. Uh, if you're joining me on YouTube, you're probably very confused by this. This is a normal stream. It's March 18th, 2020. I'm Jamie, this is Stillmeyer Games. Feel free to ask me anything and I'll share some um, Stillmeyer Games news and some random discussion topics today uh, about a variety of different things. If you caught the first like minute that I just posted, today's chocolate of the day is Salted Almond Butter by XOXO. This is one of my favorite chocolate bars ever, and I've avoided buying it in 2020, but I was in the grocery store the other day and I gave in and, and got it for myself. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for joining me today. Um, some of the topics, I'm, I'm going to talk about board games, obviously, today, some games that I've been playing, some stuff that I've been working on, and uh, some of the blog posts I've, I've done lately and, and videos I've done lately. Um, but most importantly, I want to see how you're doing today. I know that the coronavirus is, um, is upending people's lives, and so I want to make sure that you're doing okay. And if you are doing okay, how are you um, maybe helping those who aren't doing okay? Um, I'd love to hear both sides of, of the coin there. Um, one thing that, that Megan and I have been discussing is trying to, uh, even though we, ha we haven't really changed our restaurant, going, uh, restaurant visiting habits, although I think that will change in the coming weeks. We'll probably go to fewer restaurants, but we are going to try to order from more local restaurants, um, maybe significantly more. Like instead of going out to eat once a week, we might order in like three to four times over the next, uh, a week over the next few weeks, just so we can make sure that uh, in this time where, where fewer people are going to restaurants that we can still support them and make sure they stay in business, um, both to help them and so that restaurants that we love stay in business and, and weather this storm. So that's one of the things that we're, that I'm thinking about. I'd love to hear what you're thinking about um, in terms of helping businesses that might be struggling right now, helping them survive. Or if you are in that same boat and you are struggling, feel free to comment about that too in the comments. You can kind of see right now, if you're watching this, uh, both of my cats are on camera. Walter is drinking water right now. He's the fluffy one. And Biddy is sitting on his chair near the window. <laughs> Gubrandur says, what's the meaning of cats? I don't even know the meaning of cats. Uh, that's, a, that's an interestingly phrased question. Um, the meaning of cats. I don't know. It's kind of like uh, the, the meaning of life. I don't know, Gubrandur. Colton says, what's a theme that I'd like to see that hasn't been done yet? It's always a tough question to ask because the themes that come to mind or that I'm excited to see are often themes that have been done before and I just want to see them be done differently or better than they have in the past. A theme that hasn't been done yet that I'd like to see. Hmm. I don't know. I, it's kind of an, I, I'm open to a wide variety of themes as long as they add something new and interesting and special. Um, like even with Wingspan. Wingspan added what most people perceive as a new theme to the uh, the gaming world but there there were other games with bird themes um but i think it did it in such an exciting way that uh that people were excited about it for the first time perhaps of uh, for for uh, gamers who were willing to play a bird themed game uh some uh it looks like mackenzie hoffman is joining us from the meeple street mackenzie thanks for dropping by uh mackenzie's a teacher mackenzie are you uh is your school shut down right now? I know a lot of schools are, are being shut down, and that's probably tough for parents who aren't used to, to looking after their kids um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, Josh says he's working at an airport. Uh, Sarah says she's working from home, so she gets to see her first live video. Yeah, I guess that's one of the perks. Yeah, actually, viewership is definitely higher than normal today, so I wonder if more people are, are working from home and therefore able to put this video on in the background or in the foreground as they're doing that. I'm curious to see how you all are dealing with that. I'm used to working from home, so I love it. It's my, it's my normal, but for many of you, it might be new. Are you, are you enjoying it? What, what's, uh, are you struggling with it? Are you, are you disciplined enough to... to stay and, and, and get the work done? Are you finding that, that you're even more productive from home than, than uh, working from an office? I would think that might be the surprise that some people encounter, that how much more productive that you can be if you're not distracted and interrupted constantly by coworkers, but at home you might ha have other distractions and interruptions. Uh, Chris says, what are some of the things you are going to do to help the community amidst the coronavirus? Yeah, Chris, that was actually one of the questions that, that, uh, that, that, was, that I asked, that, that was on my mind that I'm thinking about. One other little thing that I did is I have, uh, and this is random, I, I know this is 
very random, but I have a, a friend to whom I made a loan. Um, I, I, I lent this person some money because uh, he was struggling with credit card debt. So I lent him some money and uh, with the expectation of monthly payments for that loan. And I, I wrote him the other day and I said, you know, for the next four months, just don't pay me anything. Um, I, I will extend the entire loan by, by four months. It's a substantial loan. It isn't a small amount, but uh, I figured it, he, he is in the types of businesses that, uh, uh, that are gonna be struggling right now. And so I thought, you know, this is something that I can do to help out one person um, who is probably gonna struggle a little, little bit over the next four months. Random example, but uh, it's something that I, I've been trying to think of things like that, where, where I, I'm in a position where I am not, my business and my income is not all that impacted, at, at least at this point, by the coronavirus. And so I want to do what I can to help those who, who are going to be struggling over the next few months and, and beyond, potentially. Uh, ben says that he can't work at all for at least two weeks. That's rough. That's definitely rough. Um, Ahmed says, what is the future of Scythe? So Scythe, the tabletop game itself, uh, the future is just reprinting stuff that we've already made, uh, hopefully bringing more people into that world and into the game by reprinting the stuff that already exists. But we are done creating new content for Scythe itself, uh, Scythe the, the, as the game exists right now. However, um, I am exploring the possibility of another completely different game in the Scythe universe, in the 1920 plus universe that Jakub Brzezowski created. Um, I'm exploring that. I don't know for sure if it will happen. It's just something that um, I'm, I'm brainstorming and, and talking about with uh, Jakob. So who knows? Um, sometimes I get texts during the live cast and I wonder if it's someone texting me saying, hey, Jamie, you, uh, you are actively bleeding. Uh, you, need to, you need to be aware of that. But, uh, <laughs> but no, it's just a, a random, random text. Tim is in day two of his lockdown in San Francisco. Yeah, San Francisco and I think some certain countries are under uh, a fairly strict lockdown. St. Louis is not that way right now, but, uh, but we are essentially self-isolating. We're making a few exceptions. I did a grocery store run the other day, um, but, uh, but trying to, to, just in case, I mean, I don't even know. I, I could have the coronavirus and I don't, I'm not showing symptoms, so I, I don't want to be a part of the problem. So I'm definitely trying to, uh, to be careful about that. Um, Joe says that he worked an election yesterday, um, ended up canceling a gaming get together with friends this weekend. Um, and yeah, I can definitely relate to that. We, I, we've canceled most of our gaming events over the next few weeks. And actually that was one of the big questions I want to ask today, but let me catch up on questions because Facebook is going to start scrolling past me here. Um, yeah. So one of the, one of the other big questions I wanted to ask today, other than uh, coronavirus stuff is, uh, Megan and I were talking and we realized, hey, you know, we're going to have a lot more time to game together over the next few weeks because we're probably not going to be gaming with groups of people. And we want to find a, a fun two player campaign game to play over the next few weeks. So one of the things I some ideas I had, I, I looked at Comanots. Um, I looked at uh, Stuffed Fables. Both are from the, the same company. Um, I, and uh, the Lord of the Rings um, uh, living card game. Looked at that. And also looked at Star Realms, which is not a campaign game, but we thought, you know, maybe if there are enough expansions for Star Realms, we could add one every night for a few nights and have a, a feeling of progression over the next uh, few weeks. But I wanted to get your thoughts. What did you think, if you've played any of those games, Comanauts, uh, Stuff Fables, Lord of the Rings, The Living Card Game, or um, Star Realms expansions, or if you have another idea for um, an ongoing campaign game. I have played a lot of campaign games, uh, so you might mention something that I've already played, that's okay but specifically campaign games for two players, um, either cooperative or competitive, either way is fine. Uh, Mackenzie confirmed that her school is closed down and they're trying to do e-learning um, and trying to be emotionally available for students, which yeah, I can see how that, that's, that's a key element too. Teachers do a lot more than just educate. They're, they're taking care of students emotionally. Um, the schools are, are feeding students. There, there's a lot that schools do that, uh, that I think we're going to realize now as, as school shut down for a little while. Um, Mackenzie says she's also trying to support her friendly local game store. Um, they're doing delivery service right now because fewer people are coming into the store. That's a, that's a great idea and great that, of you to support your local game store. Josh said, did I see the Charterstone digital release date and the Wingspan digital game? Yeah, there were two digital pieces of news that happened this week. One is that Charterstone will be released digitally 
on March 26th. So that's coming out very soon. I'm really excited about that. It looks great. They've done a ton of beta testing for it. And uh, Wingspan is, uh, they haven't announced the date yet, but it is going to be very soon. And they announced that one of the platforms they'll be launching on is uh, the Nintendo Switch, which I think is pretty cool. I'm sorry, I know, I know I just missed a question. Facebook is scrolling past questions because there are a lot of people in the comments today. Uh, so let me try to scroll through and find... Um, okay, Tony says... So if I missed your question, feel free to repeat it. I'm sorry, Facebook is scrolling past them. Tony says, have I ever uh, played a game... Um, oh, nope, Tony, Facebook made me... Move. Okay, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. I'm going to miss some questions, but I want to get to the point where I can read without Facebook scrolling past it. Uh, so I, I'm definitely going to miss some questions. Feel free to repeat it in the comments below. Uh, Brian says that he had to cancel an international gaming event that he was hosting scheduled for this weekend. I'm sorry about that, Brian. That sucks. Do you have any advice for others who have events scheduled for the next few months? Um, I mean, I, I think it's inevitable that many of them will cancel. I think that's the, the um, responsible thing to do, unfortunately. Um, one thing that you could consider is switching to a virtual format, which I know is not anywhere close to the same of getting together with a bunch of people and playing games. But, uh, but if there is an option, if you can think out of the box and find something uh, where people feel like they're, they're together, because people are going to feel a little lonely right now for a little while. Um, so if you can create that feeling of people doing something together at the same time, um, I think that can maybe be a small substitute for, uh, for a, an in-person convention or event. Uh, Vitaly says he just helped his sister set up a way for customers to buy gift cards for small businesses. Square Up makes this fairly easy. Uh, so one way Vitaly is suggesting here is buy uh, gift cards from specific restaurants or businesses right now, any businesses, uh, so that they have a little bit of cash flow. And then when they get back on their feet, they, hopefully they survive thanks to that, then you can um, use those gift cards at places that you would go otherwise. I think that's a great idea. Um, Uh, Leslie says, I'm surprised you haven't designed a cat-themed game, given my love for cats. There are already quite a few cat-themed games out there that I love, and I have snuck my cats into many of my games, but you're right, there's no cat, um, overarching cat theme in any of my games. There is one game where cats appear a little bit more than others, but uh, it, it could happen someday. We'll see. William says, I believe you had mentioned uh, pursuing Red Rising for a game idea. Any news there? I don't have any news. Um, I'm still hoping to make it happen someday, though. And uh, if I do ever have any definite news about that, I'll, I'll definitely share it. Andrew has a question about prototypes. He says he's eager to start a prototype, but he's quite intimidated because I'm trying to make a modular board. Software is also very intimidating and difficult to choose from all the options. Any tips, especially for um, modular boards? Um, I mean, I use InDesign. I'm not very good at InDesign, but I find that it is very good at creating, you know, basic shapes, put, uh, typesetting stuff. Um, and, uh, it, it just works. It, it's, it, it's from, from, for what I can do with it, it's very basic, but I think people can do a lot more stuff with InDesign than, than I'm able to do. But, uh, but Andrew, if it, it sounds like you might be in a similar position to me where you are somewhat tech savvy, but not super, not, not like Photoshop, uh, high quality InDesign level. Um, but I think InDesign is a good place to start. I'd recommend giving it a try. And I think you can try it on like a, a trial basis to see if it's a good fit for you. Chris mentioned near and far having a good campaign. I ha I agree. I, I played through the near and far campaign. Unfortunately, that would be a great fit for a two-player game right now. I wish Sleeping Gods were was already out, but it's not. That's like the the sequel to Near and Far. Uh, Benjamin mentioned that Hero Realms has a campaign. Okay, didn't know about that. Hero Realms campaign. Cool. I'll, I'll look into that. Kevin says, I hear Charterstone is a good two-player game. We're actually playing through a five-player campaign of Charterstone right now. Um, we have tentative, tentatively have uh, games five and six scheduled for tonight. I think we'll keep that. It's a, a little risky because we're bringing some friends who, who knows what we've been exposed to. But uh, we, we do have that going uh, beyond just two players. Sean says, Seventh Continent. I have played Seventh Continent. Um, I haven't played all of it. That's one that I... That I could do. That is an option, but I have already done a little bit of it. Uh, Tainted Grail. Yeah, I, I, I considered that when I couldn't find it in stock in the places that I looked. Timmy says, do I think board game sales will go up as people are looking for things to do at home or change in any way? You know, 
Timmy, I, I, I'm curious to see. I think in the short term, they will go up. I have certainly seen our web store sales go way up over the last few days. However, I think as the economic reality sets in over the next few months for quite a few people who are, who are probably going to be making less money for a little while, um, I think it will go down. So I think in the short term, it's going to go up, and then I think it's going to go down from what it would have been for a little while. Yeah. Uh, Zyman says he wish I owned Charterstone during this isolation period. Well, you can get it. We have Charterstone. The, the reprint is now available on our web store right now. So feel free to get that. Um, s retailers should have it, though I know that our distribution broker is operating a little bit slower than normal right now. So retailers may not be getting it as fast as they hoped, unfortunately. But we do have it on our web store. Uh, Joe, uh, Joe uh, is, has a comment here. Joe is one of our, our Stillmeyer champions. Um, we did a random giveaway of a bunch of games that I had on my shelf, games that, that, uh, that I haven't played in a while or don't think I'll play in the next year. And so I gave a bunch of them away to our Stillmeyer champions, and Joe received one of them. Joe, I'm glad to hear that. Hopefully you have fun with the game. Uh, Danielle also has a question about Red Rising. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad a lot of people are interested in Red Rising. And if you haven't read the Red Rising books, I highly recommend them. They are one of my favorite book series ever. Um, any progress on it? Uh, we kind of, kind of. I, I mean, I don't even, it's hard to say. I, we're moving forward with something. I don't know if it'll even be a Red Rising thing in the end um, because we don't have the rights to it. Uh, but I'm still hoping to get the rights to, uh, the tabletop rights to Red Rising. Um, yeah, but that reminds me of uh, other books. I, I'm curious to see what everyone's reading right now, what you're reading right now. I just finished um, a book called uh, The Dragon Republic. It's a, the second book of what I believe is a trilogy, uh, kind of um, Asian, uh, Asian fantasy, I would say. And it, it's fantastic. And I moved on to the latest Expanse novella, which was great, very short, like maybe one night of reading, two nights of reading. And now I'm reading a book called The Ninth House by Lee uh, Bardugo, one of my favorite authors. She is incredible. Everything she writes is just absolutely incredible. She's most known for uh, the Grisha universe, but uh, The Ninth House is kind of campus fantasy, so college campus fantasy. Really, really good. Uh, Jonathan says, any update on the digital, a uh, Viticulture digital release date? Yeah, so another uh, Viticulture, uh, not another digital game. Um, Viticulture has been progressing. I think it's in either alpha or beta testing right now. I don't have a release date at this point yet, though. Um, Alexandra says, with more and more people self-isolating due to the virus, what would be your top five games to play solo or with two players? I do have a, uh, a two-player game. Uh, my favorite two-player game video. So if you look on my YouTube channel and look for favorite, like top 10 two-player games or favorite two-player games, there, there is a list about that. I don't, I don't know them offhand, but I can name some of them on my shelf right now. I love uh, Watergate, Seven Wonders Duel, Hanami Koji, Patchwork, which we actually just played last night, Megan Crush Me, um, and uh, Key Forge and Star Realms. Those are the ones that are on my shelf. Oh, and Fog of Love is over there too. We did play Fire in the Library two-player the other day, and I really enjoyed it. I, I like that more than like the five or six-player Fire in the Library. And I also have Parks on my two-player shelf because I enjoy Parks. I think more with two players than higher player counts. Um, solo, I don't know. I don't. I don't play games solo. But other people in the comments might have some ideas there. Eddie says, "What do I think about Race for the Galaxy and Roll to the Galaxy?" Um, I definitely like to roll more. I haven't played either in a long time. Race, I, th I think it's a brilliant game, but I just have a really, really hard time with the um, uh, with the icons. There's so many different icons in the game um, that that every I feel like I'm relearning the game every time I play. Whereas roll, I would probably be it would probably be easier for me to get back into roll if I revisited it. Bob says, "What are some of the better system sites that I'd recommend for tabletop board gaming? Um, systems or sites?" Uh, Bob, you might have to clarify the question, but if you're it, some of the sites that I visit for like board gaming news and information and asking rules questions, the main one is Board Game Geek, and there's also Board Game Atlas, which is an up and coming site that I think is doing great. If you're asking for places to play tabletop games online, there's Tabletopia and Tabletop Simulator that do a great job, and there's some other ones out there too. Uh, Brian says, "What are some board games that work virtually?" Okay, that's a great actually tie into the 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 tabletopia tabletop simulator but also brian says he thought of camel up so games that like you could play you on skype with other players um i'd love to hear some suggestions in the comments 
Uh, what are some games that work that way? I can see Camel Up working. Let me look at my shelf over here. Um, it's kind of, I, I guess, I, assuming both players... You could do a cooperative game where there's no hidden information. You could do that. Um, you could also do a number of games where all players have, um, have a copy of the game. I'm looking at QE. I think QE could work on tour. On tour works great, actually, remotely. You can play on tour with any number of people. I think even the website has a place to download it. Um, I'm looking at Downforce because I'm about to get the Downforce expansion. But I think each player would need, yeah, each player would need a copy of Downforce to play that remotely. Um, but yeah, I'm I think a lot of cooperative games would work pretty well. Chase says, have I played Sleeping Gods or seen the copy yet? No, the last I heard they were still kind of finishing up the design for it, so I don't think it's even entered production yet. So I think it's going to be a while. I am a backer. I'm really excited to get it and play it, though. Daniel suggests um, Netflix watch parties. Uh-oh. Uh, the, the door was ringing. Hey, Megan, can you get that? Thanks. Uh, probably FedEx here. Uh, Chris says, what's the latest on Scythe for iOS? Um, I don't know. I, we, we, for digital games, we license them to the developers, so any news that you have is the same news that I have. Um, I've heard that it is in beta testing right now. That's all I know about it at this point. I'm scrolling. I, mean, I am reading the comments from people who, uh, who are, are struggling with the... the the, the events being canceled, group events uh, being canceled. I, I know it's tough right now, especially for extroverts. This must be a real struggle for extroverts at this time. But even for me, I, even as an introvert, um, it's it's a weird time to, um, to have to avoid friends. I, I don't really want to avoid friends. It looks like Natalia, the artist of Wingspan, joined us at some point in this chat. I'm, I'm scrolling down and catching up right, at this point. Um... Gerald says, am I thinking of holding off releasing expansions and games until there is more certainty with the economy? You know, no, we're not really changing our, our schedule. Um, but uh, so we, we do have a, a, a My Little Scythe expansion announcement will we'll be in a few weeks. We're going to stick with that. And then our next game isn't until uh, mid-summer. We got our Universal Yums box, it looks like. Um, our next game isn't until the summer, and so it, hopefully things will be better by then. I think things will still be very different, but hopefully better. And uh, then after that, uh, we hopefully we'll have a few expansions later this year, but it's so much later in the year that I think I, I, I'm hoping things will be better by then. But you're right, maybe I should, uh, I could reduce the print runs of those games by a little bit, um, anticipating tough times ahead. But I think eventually I, I, I want to have enough I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm making games to bring joy to people, and I think uh, that, that's important in this time. The games aren't essential. They aren't essential like food and shelter um, and, and healthcare, things like that. But, uh, but I think the joy that games offer is important. And so I want to I wanna keep, um, I don't want to overwhelm people with, a, with too much stuff, but we don't have too much stuff releasing this year. So I think it'll be okay. Ahmed says, Scythe, new comment will be on Kickstarter or retail. Uh, we haven't used Kickstarter in years, so we have no plans on using Kickstarter uh, uh, at, at any foreseeable time in the future. Darren says Gloomhaven will give you plenty to do. Yeah, Darren, I actually I, I was thinking about Gloomhaven. Actually, I was thinking about Frosthaven the other day. I own Gloomhaven. I, I uh, gave it away. Um, but Frosthaven does intrigue me. It, does, it, it, it appears to be less about the combat and more about a lot of other stuff that sounds really cool. But I'm wondering, has anyone ever created a, uh, a house rule or a modified version of Gloomhaven where you don't have to go through all the combat? Because that was the part of the game that I really struggled with. I got just, it just ended up feeling repetitive very quickly where every scenario you're just going through and fighting more monsters. And I know that's the meat of the game. I know people really enjoy that. But I enjoy all the other stuff. I enjoy exploring the world, the, uh, the, the stuff that you're encountering on, on the road and in the city. And I think Frosthaven is going to have a lot more of that stuff. So I wonder if there will be a way to play Frosthaven where you can kind of just skip past the combat or play the combat in like two minutes instead of two hours. 
Um, I'd love for there to be a version like that. I know that's incredibly, um, it could be perceived as incredibly offensive, um, but it's not a, a, a slight on the design of the tactical combat in Gloomhaven. I understand that, that it, it's a great design. A lot of people love it. But I wonder if there's a way to bypass it for those of us like me that would rather get to the story and the, the city building in Frosthaven and all that other cool stuff that's going to happen um, without having to be... Um, without having to go through the tackle combat. So I'm cu curious, in the Gloomhaven world, is there anything like that? Has anyone modified it to allow that to happen? Gabe mentions Legends of Andor. That is a good idea, Dave. Uh, Gabe, I, I could see that being a good option. And uh, since Gabe is here, I'll give a, a little plug to Gabe. Gabe has uh, a book on Kickstarter right now. Gabe, feel free to mention or uh, post a link in the comments below. Um, it is... Uh, oh, I forget the title of it, Gabe. It, it's about uh, it's about Kickstarter, but I forget the actual title of it offhand. So I, I don't want to say it. it's, it's something about the the best advice about Kickstarter. Um, Gabe runs the Board Game Design Lab, but if someone can post that link in the comments below, that would be awesome. Uh, Logan says, have you ever, have you ever, "Are you ever playing print and play games? If so, which ones? Great time for those right now." Um, I I like I. I do enough playing of like prototypes using print and play copies of, of prototypes that when I want to sit down and play a game, I want to sit down and play the, the real published game with the real uh, final components. So, um, no, I don't, I don't play any print and play games. Raphael says, apart from Board Game Geek, what sites do I think are the best places to promote your game worldwide? Um, I think Board Game Geek is the best at that. If you want to expose people using traditional advertising, traditional online advertising, I think Board Game Geek is the best place to do that. You can also try Board Game Atlas. I'm, um, I don't know what their traffic levels are yet, but they're they're, they're getting up there. They're, they're doing they're increasing their traffic on Board Game Atlas. Zyman says, at which point in the game creation process should a new designer start leaving traces on the internet about the evolution of his work and start building a community? Um, well, okay, so I have two answers. One, I would, one answer I would say is from day one, from as soon as you start hatching ideas for it, just put them out there, share, share what you're working on, share your excitement, your passion, um, ask questions to other people. Um, the other step might be when you know that you're actually going to pursue the game because a lot of ideas don't actually lead to anything. So uh, you might get a bunch of people excited about something that you're working on and then you realize that this just doesn't work. I need to switch to a completely different idea. So... I lean towards the first, especially if you're a new designer. Like, why not? Like, go into it understanding that the thing that you're that you're working on might never come to life and may never work out. But that's okay. Get it, you'll along the way you will build relationships with people and learn from other people, learn from other games, um, and I think that's worth it. William says, "Do I have any insights to share on the standard versus deluxe game poll?" Yeah. Uh, so I hosted a poll a few weeks ago on my blog um, asking if people, what people's preferences were about um, about a, a buying the deluxe version of the game versus the standard version and then having the option to add an upgrade pack later or buying the standard version and just buying add-ons that essentially create a deluxe version. And uh, based on the people who responded to the poll, the, the biggest answer seemed to be that most people wanted to either buy the deluxe version or the standard version and then later consider a deluxe upgrade pack all in one place. So that's not going to work for all of our games. Um, but if we have a game where I, I feel like a deluxe version is necessary, uh, most of our games, I try to produce them as the deluxe versions out of the box. Like our standard games are the, are the deluxe versions. But if I had a case where I, I felt like there was a big divide between the two, I would consider doing both based on that poll. Um, John says, with the current situation, legacy games are a great way to pass the time. If you could give any game a legacy edition, which one would you, would you choose? You know, one of the ones I would have said is Clank Legacy or Clank. And then they came out with Clank Legacy. And it is one of my favorite, if not my favorite legacy game. It is a fantastic game. There's also Charterstone. Uh, Charterstone is uh, one of the few legacy games that isn't based on um, an existing property. It's a, it's a world in itself. It's a new game that introduces, a, that, that is a legacy game in itself. But John's asking, if there's a game that doesn't already have a legacy version, what would I, uh, what would I choose for it? Um, I'd go with Castles of Mad King Ludwig, actually. I love that game, and I think it could have a really cool legacy version. Um, people are reading, uh, mentioning some books that they're reading right now. Red Rising, Fall or Dodge in Hell, Never Split the Difference. Um, 
Mitch says he's reading Never Split the Difference for the fourth time. That's all. Well, I need to, if you're reading for the fourth time, I need, I need to check that out. Never Split the Difference. Uh, George is, say, is reading Seven Eves by Neil Stevenson, and I, I agree. It, that is a fantastic book. It's dense, but it is really, really good. One of my favorite books from a few years ago. Gerald says, am I watching more of Rado now that I need good uh, good two-player games? Um, I'm all, always watching Rado. I don't think that's changed um, since I've, I've gotten into a relationship. So I would say that I'm watching him the same amount. Rado Runs Through, for those of you who don't know, is a, is a YouTube channel of a, a guy who mostly plays games with his wife. So he talks about games from a two-player perspective a lot. Um... Mackenzie says, what are some newly released games that I've enjoyed recently? We're learning Tang Garden currently, and I'm very excited for it. Um, newly released games that I've enjoyed. Well, I have a Downforce, the Downforce expansion coming up soon. I've really been enjoying Glenn Moore. Loving Glenn Moore. Um, in fact, just the other day, there's an expansion that is very loosely based on Viticulture. The third Chronicle in Glenn, this is Glenn Moore 2 Chronicles, the new version of it. Um, the third Chronicle in it is called Jamie's... Oh, old whiskey batch or something like that and or old whiskey distill, distillery and we played that at a game day a couple days ago and it was really really good i really enjoyed it and it's kind of neat to see a reference to to me and to viticulture in the game um so that's probably the, the latest release that i've really, really really been enjoying um i also played a game called hierarchy the other day i don't think it's a brand new release but it is a fantastic two-player game. If anyone's looking for a two-player game, I highly recommend Hierarchy, especially if you enjoy games like uh, Hanami Koji, which I think is another fantastic two-player game. Um, I also have been loving Azul Summer Pavilion, which is a fairly recent release as well. Uh, what else did I play recently? I played The Duke as well. I played Five Tribes for the first time in a long time. I'm glad I returned to it. I kind of dismissed Five Tribes. It just wasn't my style of game. But I, Upon this play, this is like my third or fourth play, I think I actually did enjoy it. I, I'd be happy to return to it again. Um, also, I've really been enjoying Spirits of the Forest. That will make an appearance in my top 10 favorite abstract games video coming this Sunday. And uh, you'll have to see if it's in the top 10 or not. I, I mentioned a lot of different games. And this past week, if you're interested in games that feature combat, whether it's combat against another player or combat against the AI, like in a cooperative game, um, that was my video this past week. Uh, this is my Sunday sit-down video. It was probably the longest Sunday sit-down video or one of my, the longest I've ever done because I talked about combat mechanisms in a lot of different games and then got to my top 10. But it was fun to do. And I also uh, did a video about Escape Plan, uh, the latest, well, not the latest. Uh, on Mars is the latest Vitala Serta game, but it's one of the more recent Vitala Serta games. Did a video on that. Aaron mentions that roll and write games in general are great on Skype. And yeah, I don't think they all work on Skype, but but uh, but many of them do. Like On Tour definitely does, and Welcome To, I think, would work as well. Uh, Steven says, what would I need to play online in terms of the technical side? He's going to try and set this up for Friday. Uh, I think you just need like a Skype or Zoom or, or uh, Google Hangouts. I think that would do it. Steven says, I've been asked about supply chain issues with the virus, but what about sales? Do I anticipate a slowed economy will hurt board game sales? Yeah, Steven, I mentioned this a little while ago. I may have, um, I'm still catching up on questions, but I think in the short term, from what I've seen, sales seem to be going up, um, at least direct web store sales from, from our website. Um, in the long term, I think, uh, I think they will go down for a little while. Perhaps over the spring and summer months, they might be down because people have less money to spend for a little while. Um, Jared says, when working on Tapestry and Scythe, what was my strategy to make sure all the asymmetric factions were well balanced? Playtesting. Um, with Scythe, we, we, in both games, Scythe and, ta and Tapestry, we playtested, we did, and not just local playtesting, play but really blind playtesting was what I used for balancing. Um, we, we had hundreds of blind playtests for these games to, see, to make sure that each of the sieves and factions were as well balanced as possible. Despite that, things slipped through. Um, and I think one of the reasons for that isn't the amount of blind playtesting. I think we had the right amount of blind playtesting. But one thing I didn't do as well that I'm learning about is uh, analyzing the data uh, better than I have in the past. And so now we, uh, now and going forward, like with the first Tapestry expansion, I, I started doing this. I've enlisted the help of someone named Jeremy who is really, really good at data analysis. 
And so he is now, whenever we have a new playtest come through, he looks at the data and, and points out things that I am not even noticing because that's not my specialty. So I'm catching some of the things, but Jeremy is doing kind of a deep dive, a deep dive analysis into the playtesting data to make sure that uh, asymmetry in our games is, uh, is, is working out, is, is more balanced than I otherwise would have known about. Um, Steven says, uh, some people are talking about how to get set up for uh, remote gaming. And um, let's see who mentioned multiple cameras. Uh, Bob says he recommends multiple cameras. And Steven says, any, anywhere where he can go to get good advice about how to do that setup. And I don't know, that's a good question. If anyone has any recommendations for Steven about how to, how to do a great setup for virtual gaming beyond just plugging in your webcam, uh, that's a great question for the comments here. Uh, what else? Oh, I did a, a post on Monday about um, the marketing of of love and relationships. Uh, something that I found since starting to date Megan uh, around nine months ago is that now when I when I buy like board games or when I buy certain things, I think is Megan going to enjoy this? Are we going to enjoy this together? And if not, I might I might not buy it, or it might make me look at things that um, that I wouldn't have otherwise considered. And uh, so I did a blog post about that. Uh, I think it's an interesting topic about how different companies actually use that as a marketing strategy to get you to think about your significant other when you're when you're considering buying something. Uh, one of the companies that I mentioned was Me Undies, which I think does a fantastic job of uh, of encouraging you to basically buy matching underwear as your significant other with fun, silly patterns on it. Um, uh, but I didn't get a lot of other great examples in the post, so in the comments. So if you feel free to check out that post um, and if you have any examples of other companies that do a good job of marketing to like love and relationships, I'd love to hear about that in the comments here or on YouTube or on the, on the blog. And actually the other thing I mentioned on there that I was hoping to get an answer to is I, I'm looking for a good survey system um, that offers branched, uh, a, like a branched path survey system where if you, uh, if someone went to our website and said uh, and was faced with a question like, um, "What types of games do you or do you and your significant other enjoy cooperative games?" and if the answer is yes, it branches over here. If the answer is no, it branches over here, and gives different results based on those answers. If you have any survey software you recommend that does that really well, a survey app, um, I'd love to hear about that in the comments here. I'm looking through here. Oh, Gabe posted the link to uh, board. Okay, the book is called Board Game Kickstarter Advice from the Best in the World. Thank you, Gabe. Giorgio says, what's my opinion on tabletop simulator, tabletopia, etc.? How much of those is legal? Also, can game designers use software for pitching it to publishers who might be some countries away? Um, my So some people don't use those platforms legally. They don't ask permission from the publisher and they just put uh, games on them. That's not cool. That's not okay. You got to ask for permission. Um, however, for all of our games on those platforms, they are official versions of those games. Those platforms have put them with our permission on the platform um, officially, and so I absolutely support that. Um, I don't know overall how many are legal, but all of our games, as far as I know, are legal on there. And can um, can game designers use those platforms to put their prototypes on there to pitch to publishers? Absolutely, I think that's a great way to do it, especially remotely um, for publishers around the world. And it also offers you the opportunity to actually, if a publisher says, yeah, I'm interested in your game, can you show it to me? Then you can actually teach it instead of the publisher having to learn it from the rule book, which prototype rule books can often be pretty bad. So having the designer there to teach it can be pretty nice. Um, Aaron says, if I'm signing up for an account on Board Game Atlas, it asks me, for a referring user, interesting. Do you, do you have a username I can use so they know you are helping them increase their traffic? Oh, I uh, guess it's not a requirement, it's just they're asking. I think my username on Board Game Atlas is Jamie Stegmeier, as it usually is. Um, yes, it's just Jamie Stegmeier, no spaces, just my first and my last name. It's not Stonemeyer, Stonemeyer isn't my name, but Jamie Stegmeier. Uh, Steven's reading The Lies of Locke Lamora, which is really enjoying, nice. Um, Mark also recommended Never Split the Difference. Multiple recommend recommendations for this book now. Allie is reading The Throne of Glass is one of my current favorite reads. 
Throne of Glass. I'm, I feel like I've read that. I, I've read definitely a book series that has the word throne in it, and I think that's the one. Uh, Cynthia's reading A Boy and His Dog at the End of the World. I've heard good things about that. Simon asked for everyone's highest so score in Scythe. That's probably a better question for the Scythe uh, Facebook group, but, uh, but you can ask it here. Um, I don't even know my highest score. I don't know if I've ever crossed 100 in Scythe, uh, just based on the way that I play. I don't know if that has actually happened. Um, and again, I'll, I'll re I didn't get a ton of, I got a few ideas for this, but I'm curious if anyone has played Comanauts, Stuffed Fables, or Lord of the Rings, the Living Card Game, and if they would recommend any of them for a couple who is somewhat self-isolated for the next few weeks. So if you've played any of those games, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, Mackenzie says that she's reading the Ark of the Scythe series from Neil Schusterman, um, which I, I actually finished that, or I finished the trilogy at least. I, it, might, it might be continuing, but I finished book three a little while ago. It's really interesting. I agree. It's a, it's a very uh, interesting take on a dystopian future. That isn't all that dystopian. It actually works out pretty well for most people. And it reminds me a little bit, actually, that we're watching Altered Carbon on Netflix right now, which is definitely not young adult. There's a a pretty it's a mature show to watch um, but it also deals with the idea of what happens when you can't really die anymore where when it's very difficult to die um, uh, explores that uh, that sci-fi sci question of what happens when people don't die anymore and people are essentially immortal Chad says will my gaming group be affected tonight and yes I, I, I did cancel my regular gaming group tonight we are still going to proceed. We're instead replacing it with Charterstone Games 5 and 6 with uh, just three other people, which I know is still a risk, but, uh, but we're going we're gonna to try it. Steven says, slightly personal question, but hopefully a compliment. He happened to watch an old video of yours from 2016, and it struck me that you seem to have lost weight. Not that you were ever big, but you do seem leaner. Well, thank you, Steven. I appreciate that. I have been, um, over the last year, I've been... A lot better at, at taking care of myself. Um, I, I still, I, I think I've eaten in, in moderation and, and been pretty healthy for most of my adult life. But uh, now I do like a 20 minute workout every day. I've been vegetarian for the last two months. And even over the, over the last year, I, I made sure to have two meals a day that were vegetarian and just one where I had meat. I've tried to reduce my sweets. Um, and I've lost uh, 20 pounds. I'm basically at my ideal weight now where I, I think I was way above it for a little while. So, but thank you. Thank you. That's very nice of you to say. Um, Kevin says he's used SurveyMonkey when he hasn't had access to the Qualtrics server. Yeah, I have used Qualtrics before, but it was pretty pricey. Maybe I'll check out their prices to see if they're um, lower than they were the last time I used them. Uh, Brendan says, uh, oh, Brendan just has uh, nice comments, and he says that his game Starlight is on Kickstarter right now and that it's doing well. Uh, that's great. Thank you, Brendan. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Phoebe and Mark are joining us from Australia. I hope you guys are doing well. Or I think you're still in Australia. Did you move to Canada or are you still in Australia? I was confused about that. But Phoebe, I, I'm glad to see your project, your Kickstarter project uh, about uh, board game themed clothing is still going well. That's awesome to see. Uh, Sarah says, what is Megan's favorite game? Um, I... I don't know her overall favorite game, but I know one of her favorite games right now is Fantastic Factories. So maybe we should play that two-player. She loves that game. She's undefeated at it. She's also undefeated at Azul Summer Pavilion. Um, she's very good at games. But I think uh, she would say that Fantastic Factories is one of her favorite games right now. Uh, Bob says that Google Sheet surveys may have added branch and conditional questions. I've, it, it does have conditional questions, but it doesn't have conditional results from what I've found. Because I want people to fill out the survey and then be given a result at the end to say, like, um, as a couple, you and your significant other might really enjoy Charterstone. And that's the result of all these other questions that you've asked, that I've asked. Maybe. Kevin says that he has stuffed fables and enjoys it, uh, especially with his nieces and nephews. Uh, Lord of the Rings from Fantasy Flight Games was their first dating game. That's pretty cool. We liked it for a while, but it eventually got stale. Um, Megan and I, I don't, I don't know if you all know, but we traveled to New Zealand in the fall specifically because we wanted to go to Hobbiton and see a lot of the filming sites for the Lord of the Rings. So we are big fans of Lord of the Rings, and that's one of the reasons why I thought to put that on the list. It might be fun to explore. I just, I know sometimes Fantasy Flight Games can be a little fiddly, um, and it looked a little fiddly. 
So I, I've been a little hesitant to get into it, but maybe I'll watch another review um, and convince myself to at least give it a try. This is the Lord of the Rings LCG that I'm talking about. Um, some people are also recommending uh, stuff fables. Uh, Phoebe says that the, the gameplay might be a little bit too simple, um, but that Comanauts ups the, uh, the complexity a little bit to make it more adult themed or maybe more engaging for adults. Sarah says that she loves stuff fables. Um, she says it especially hits the heartstrings if you had a favorite stuffed animal growing up. And uh, that, uh, absolutely, I, I, had, I had a little koala growing up. Um, I actually still have koala somewhere. I think koala might be in storage right now. Koala's name was koala. So uh, that, that might, might actually work. That might be pretty cute to, to revisit that aspect of nostalgia in childhood. Uh, Steven just played uh, story one of Stuff Fables. It sounds like a game that's really good to play with the kids from what I'm hearing. And we don't have kids. Uh, Sean says that he enjoyed Comanauts. Um, thank you all for answering this question. I really do appreciate it. This is, this is very helpful. Um, Mackenzie says that she and Will enjoyed Stuff Fables. Uh, the story is good. It keeps players engaged. Um, and she's going to throw her, her review in the comments here. That would be awesome, Mackenzie. I'd love to read your review. Phoebe confirms that she is still in Australia. Tom says, uh, if you're into the, into the intellectual property of Lord of the Rings, the story is interesting. It's not much of a campaign unless you get one of the saga boxes. Um, you're not required to keep the same deck from game to game. Arkham Horror does a much better job of, of the campaign feeling. And then Journeys of Middle-Earth. Yeah, we actually did play Journeys of Middle-Earth last week at game night. I have a video coming out about that soon. Um, actually, have I filmed that video? Maybe I don't have a video coming out about it. I, need to, I think I need to film that one. Yes, I haven't filmed that video yet. Um, but we did play that, and it's fine. But it, for the same reason that I struggled with Gloomhaven, I think I'm going to struggle with that game. Because it felt like we didn't really do that much. Like, we fought some monsters, and... That was it. It was the introductory scenario, so maybe I need to get past that and try another one. But uh, tactical combat games are not something that I am really interested in. I'm, yeah, that's just that's not my preference. Um, Mahir says, since I'm exploring a deck building game, he would highly recommend checking out Cuisine a la Card. It does things that I've not seen in other deck builders. I will check that out. Thank you, Mahir. Cuisine a la Card. Clever name there. Uh, looks like Chance just joined us, one of my members of my gaming group, but uh, um, won't be meeting this week, unfortunately, Chance. Hopefully we'll be back to it soon. I don't know if it'll be, I don't know if we'll get together again next week. Yeah, it's going to be weird to have not, not have game nights for a little while. Sarah says that Claustrophobia 1643 is an awesome two-player campaign game, game if you haven't already played it. We haven't. Sarah, let me know. Is it mostly combat? Because that's something that I don't think we would engage with all that well. Um, but if there's more to it than just combat, let me know. Or especially a lot more to it than just combat. Chance is working from home. Uh, Ahmed says that he's played Stuff Fables with his kids. It's enjoyable, but it feels a little repetitive after a while. And he says he wouldn't recommend it for you guys. If I tried a game called The Rise of Fenris, it is awesome. I play The Rise of Fenris. Megan actually has not played The Rise of Fenris. So we could do that, but I'd rather play something that I haven't played through yet if we're going to do a campaign game. Uh, Chance, actually, what do you think? I know Chance has a, 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 a wife a, 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 and for a long time was a girlfriend with whom we played games. Um, did, have you ever played a campaign game that you and Rayma really enjoyed together as a two-player campaign? I think I covered all of my topics today. It's been fun to talk with you all today and, and see what your, your thoughts are on working from home, the coronavirus, the um, Various games, campaign games that you might play in self self isolation. Oh, one other thing that I forgot to mention. Oh, two, a couple things. I watched Frozen Two, which Disney Plus put up a little bit earlier the other day, and I watched the new Charlie's Angels. Both were actually really good. And I also Megan and I have been playing a boxing VR game that is a lot of fun. Uh, it's we we mostly played Beat Saber with friends up to this point, but we now have like an, an Oculus, so we can play stuff here at home. And this boxing game has been it's been a really good workout. It's been awesome. So if you're looking for like a little workout from home and you have VR, I highly recommend whatever the Oculus boxing game is. I don't know the name of it, but it's been really, really cool to play. Chance says, do I ever use Tabletop Simulator? He's considering it now. Any insight? 
Um, I've used it a little bit, mostly to test our games on, on Tabletop Simulator, but I've heard good things. I find the Tabletopia interface a little bit more intuitive, but you're pretty tech savvy. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you can, you can figure it out. Uh, and uh, I think I've heard the Tabletop Simulator paired with Discord, where you can actually talk to the people that you're playing with, works out really, really well. Phoebe recommends uh, Zingtree. So I was looking for a branching path survey software that could present different results to people who answer. Kind of like a personality quiz. Um, she recommends Zingtree. Well, so I did consider a flow chart, um, but I kind of want it to be more interactive. I, I, I want people to, I'll still take a look at it for sure. I appreciate the recommendation. Um, but I was hoping to keep it simple because I know a flow chart can even can even be a little overwhelming uh, to present people with a bunch of data up front. So I, I was kind of hoping to break it down into little questions where you can just answer like five yes or no questions and then be given a result. Um, that just seemed slightly more user friendly, but I'll, I'll check out Zingtree. Ahmed says, what about Descent, Second Edition, and Mansions of Madness? I, I do enjoy Mansions of Madness. I haven't played all of it. I have played some of it, and I think that could potentially work. Um, or Descent Second Edition, yeah, I, I think that might be a little bit too combat-y for me, but, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, like, what is the percentage of combat in Descent Second Edition compared to all the other things that you're doing in the game? Um, Derek says that he found that Journeys in Middle-Earth is comparable to Mansions of Madness Second Edition in terms of story combat balance. That's good to know, because I did find Mansions of Madness ended up being a lot less about the combat than I thought in certain scenarios. So... Um, there were certain scenarios where there was very little combat, and I thought that was really, really nice. Uh, Chance played Pandemic Legacy Season 1 as a couple, um, and so that worked well. I could, I could definitely see that. I don't think Megan has played any of the Pandemic Legacies, but I have played both of them. Sarah says that Claustrophobia 1649 or whatever it was is a dice action selection game that is a dungeon crawl with a modular board. There is combat. She says she doesn't like combat much either, but it's a large part of the game. It might be worth a shot. You know, I'll take a look at it. Why not? Um, maybe there's a form of tactical combat that I haven't found yet that I, that I might actually really enjoy. Claustrophobia 1640-something. Melissa said, if I had to recommend a solo game to learn right now, what would it be? Or which would be the first? I have a couple, but I've never tried them out. You know, I don't, I haven't really explored any solo only games. I've heard that Coffee Roaster, I do have Coffee, Coffee Roaster um, borrowed from a friend. I've heard that's a very good game if you like bag building games. It is a solo only game. Um, uh, Gay Barrett, actually, who was on here, has a game called Hunted, actually, that's a solo only game. If you're looking for a game that can be played solo or multiplayer, um, I, the game of ours that I recommend is uh, Viticulture. Viticulture, I think, has an excellent solo mode that's very easy for someone, even if they don't, aren't used to like the complexity that can be added by adding solo rules to a multiplayer game. It's really easy and streamlined to add the solo element to Viticulture. Steven says, how about that epic ballad in the middle of Frozen 2? Uh, the parents, his parents were rolling in the theater when it was out. That was, I actually wrote a blog post about Frozen 2 last night, Stephen, and that was one of my two favorite things about the movie. I absolutely, I was just delighted that they put an 80s style power ballad in, uh, in the middle of the movie. It was awesome. Jonathan says, which Oculus device do you have? We have the Quest, the one that's cordless. Um, Tom says that in Journeys of Middle-Earth, we can choose to avoid combat, but the game uses en enemies to apply pressure. That's true. I could see us, like, avoiding the combat. I don't even mind, like, the puzzle of combat sometimes, but I, I, want, other, I want other things to do, I think. Vitaly recommends Machi Kuro Legacy. I could see that. Yeah, we, we actually did enjoy, um, we enjoy Space Base, so I could see Machi Kuro Legacy. If we can find it in stock somewhere. Phoebe says, um, okay, so Phoebe confirmed that Zingtree might be actually what we are looking for to do for a personality style test. Uh, all right, yeah. Um, reached the end of the comments here, and I've reached the end of my questions, and it's just after 11 o'clock now, so we've been live for an hour. Thank you so much for joining me today. I, uh, In times of, of self-isolation, it's, it's wonderful to be able to interact with people like this. Um, so thank you for joining me. If you have any additional questions or thoughts or comments, I'd recommend posting it on YouTube. I'll put this on YouTube in a few minutes. 
that's where I'll be able to see additional things that you post. So have a great Wednesday. Take care of yourself. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you next Wednesday. Take care.